1863 was an important year in history. It was, for example, the middle of the American Civil War, and on January 1st, Abraham Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation, changing the lives of millions of slaves in the US. While obviously of much lesser importance, it was also a turning point in art history. In Paris, the yearly art salon was held, the biggest art exhibition in the world, and two of the works that were submitted were Le Déjeuner sur l'herbe by Édouard Manet and The Bird of Venus by Alexandre Cabanel, and they were polar opposites. Both paintings contain a naked woman, and both made headlines but for different reasons. Manet's work was rejected from the salon and instead he exhibited in an alternative salon for refused paintings. But even there, his work caused enormous controversy. The opinions of visitors, other artists and art critics were all over the place. The work of Cabanel on the other hand was received very well. Whereas the naked woman of Manet casually looks at the viewer, the Venus of Cabanel shyly looks at us. And more importantly, the nude woman of Manet is set in a contemporary setting, which was considered very vulgar by many. The Venus of Cabanel instead is part of a mythological story, and such works were perfectly acceptable and even highly respected by most viewers. Let's have a closer look at what we see in Cabanel's Birth of Venus. As the title mentions, this is the mythological birth of the Roman goddess Venus. Just as a quick reminder, the most popular story of her birth is that she was conceived when the titan Cronus castrated his father, the god Uranus. The severed genitals fell into the sea, fertilizing it, leading to the birth of a mature and sensual woman named Venus. So Cabanel captures the moment here when she is born from the foam of the sea. It looks as if she has just awakened from a deep slumber. She languidly rests her head upon a small wave that is beginning to form on the far right. The water seems to conform to her twisted contrapposto body, nicely following the shape of her waist. And her golden hair flows from beneath her left arm floating beside her in the blue-green waters. Upon first glance, her eyes may seem shut, but a closer look reveals that they are slightly open, as if she is lazily looking at us. Above her is a pastel sky, decorated with thin clouds and five cherubs who are celebrating and announcing her arrival with horns made of seashells. The three cherubs closest to her face peer over her body with playful curiosity, arms stretched out, perhaps preparing to wake her up. When one mentions the birth of Venus, the first thing that comes to mind of most people is Botticelli's version of this subject, painted in the 1480s. The enormous popularity of this painting has inspired many other great artists to paint their variation on this subject. And while the Venus of Botticelli is naked, she partly conceals herself with her arms and hair. Soon after, however, the appearance of Venus became more explicit and sensual. A famous early example is the Venus of Urbino painted by Titian in the 1530s. During the Baroque, these two paintings became somewhat less popular, but by the end of the 18th century their popularity surged and many more idealized female nudes started to appear, starting with works like The Naked Maya by Goya and La Grande Odalisque by Jean-Auguste Dominique Ingres. And while those two works caused some controversy, few people had a problem when the ideal female nude appeared in a mythological setting, which often meant that Venus or Aphrodite was the main subject. Angra painted Venus in a work that he completed in 1848, and two years later Edward Steinbruck painted this work, 
also entitled The Birth of Venus. These works fit in a stream of works that are labeled as academic art. But the second half of the 19th century also became the beginning of an art movement called Realism, where artists like Courbet and Manet started to move away from idealized historical and mythological works. And that meant that some daring artists started to experiment with the female nude. Manet's Olympia is perhaps the most famous example. While only exhibited in 1865, he actually painted it in the same year as his Déjeuner sur l'herbe and Cabanel's The Bird of Venus. The realism and confrontational take on Manet's nudes caused a shock in the art world. Cabanel's work, however, perfectly fitted in the progression of academic art and it was immediately bought by Emperor Napoleon III for his own personal collection. Today it is in the Musée d'Orsay in Paris and this work earned Cabanel a new job as well as he became that year a professor at the prestigious École des Beaux-Arts. Cabanel also capitalized on his success in other ways. After he exhibited the work, he sold the reproduction rights of the painting to the art dealer and publisher Adolphe Goupil. And he also created two replicas, one of which is part of the collection of the Metropolitan Museum of Art. And despite all the turbulence in the art world around this time, other artists continued to create their own version of the birth of Venus. Here is for example a beautiful version from 1879 by William Adolphe Bouguereau. Venus stands on top of a shell which is pulled by a dolphin and she is surrounded by putai, nymphs and centaurs. And 10 years earlier Arnold Bucklin captured his interpretation of the birth on the canvas. Another beautiful version was painted in 1877 by Fritz Zuberbuhler and in 1896 Henri Gervais created his version, which is more in line with the work of Cabanel, showing how the waves are pushing Venus to the shore. Let me know in the comments down below if you have any favorites among these works. Well, I hope you enjoyed this discussion of The Birth of Venus by Alexandre Cabanel. If you did, please hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to be alerted when new videos are released. Thanks for watching.